Camilla, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Dr. Amaranti, how are you doing? Good? <laughs> okay. So Camilla, what brings you here? What would you like to do? <laughs> well, I'm going to have a breast augmentation with a gel implant. I okay. don't know the size yet. <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll have to get to that today, I guess. Sure, no, no. <laughs> Uh, let me understand just so I you know so I know what, what you're thinking about would you like it you know a big increase would you like a moderate increase what's what's in your mind I'm thinking of the moderate plus okay because I have zero capacity okay whatsoever okay. I'm okay. a 32b at the moment okay. and it's very like no space okay whatsoever. all right a 32b okay. I'll, I'll note that down okay mm -hmm. and uh and you you do prefer something that looks more natural more artificial because people like different things you know <laughs> i prefer something more natural, natural? but something okay. that is forever that i'm not going to regret later on or it's too small or okay. you know, it's too big okay it's okay something that goes with my body like, you, i trust you with that. <laughs> okay all right you do know that we do have to exchange that in a, yeah. you know a number of years that depends on a lot of things but if everything goes well you have no you know absolutely no complications maybe 15 years maybe even 20 years but that mm -hmm. depends a lot on you know how things go okay i just don't want to regret this size and a lot of people sure. when the swelling comes down they yes. say oh my god it's too yeah. small and it doesn't want... swell a lot but it does swell a little bit and, and that does create that you know that that mm -hmm. sensation that you decrease the number it's not a full number actually but you know just so you know so i, I think that's a good idea <laughs> We usually go with the upper you know mm -hmm. limit of what you want and of course since you're starting out and you don't have a lot also we can't put it we can't exaggerate because there's two things first of course a lot of weight makes it you know sag sooner okay because mm -hmm. there's more weight yeah. people believe that when you have um when you have a, a an implant that it will never sag that's not true okay mm -hmm. the more weight you have it whether it's yours or whether it's an implant plus an implant it will know the more weight the, the sooner it will sag so if it's a moderate size also that helps okay plus if you uh if you put a very large very large size the first time you do it when you don't have a lot of skin you can get stretch marks and those don't go away okay we still don't have something that makes them go away so you know we got to think of all those things you know taking all of in consideration so we have the best result possible okay all right <laughs> So let me just note down, so it's a 32B, okay. But I don't even think it's like a full B. A full B. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's all right. That's right, all right. I go back to the gym. That's a very important question, mm -hmm. okay? I would say from two to three months. The first two months, it's not that the breast is ready, but it's when you, the scar is ready to take on tension, okay? So for the first two months, do not raise your arms more than 90 degrees, okay. just up to that. Do not lift or push heavy objects also for two months, okay? This is very important for two reasons. First, so the scar is good. Second, and especially in the first few weeks, if you're raising up a lot or pushing in heavy objects, you can displace the implant ends up here it's really weird we have to redo the operation okay and it makes it very hard to do it because you open up a, like a like a pack you know like a like a like a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a space that and you have to close up okay um, <laughs> uh, when it comes to driving okay I would say if you can do it for like two weeks at least not drive that would be best okay because you know cars are smooth the, 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 the driving wheels are good but you can have an emergency you can have you know to move suddenly so I would say at least two weeks okay, okay. when it comes to stairs right after the operation that's fine no you can do it's not you're gonna run or anything like that just go slowly but you can do that and you're gonna be walking okay not walking extensive distances mm -hmm. but you're gonna be walking it's very far to you know to prevent um, blood clots and everything okay that was gonna be one of my next questions okay all right um, <laughs> I feel really young to die blood clot risk <laughs> okay. with the breast augmentation it's very small because it's a small surgery. Uh, we're usually, the surgery itself is around 30 to 40 minutes, which decreases a lot, uh, the risk with that. But anyway, we take care. The care we take is, you know, using compression garments inside the, the OR, mm -hmm. outside the OR, asking you to wear for a compression garment for, you know, for, for at least the first three to four weeks, okay? And walk, drink lots of fluids. We'll, we'll repeat that all when you, know, when you come here at the day tomorrow but all those things we don't do uh, blood thinners for such a small surgery okay uh, especially because of the of the implants because they increase 
the possibility of hematomas, which are a problem for this kind of operation, okay? And then massages? Well, yeah, this, for this kind of operation is not essential, okay? No. You can do it for comfort, you know, like a light drainage, like lymphatic drainage, that's good, okay? It's not like a heavy thing that they do for BBLs and liposuctions because we don't really infiltrate a lot of, you know, fluid and stuff. So you can do it for comfort, but it's not essential for this, no, for this kind of operation, no. But it's essential that you use a band, okay, we're, since we're putting it under the muscle and the muscle tends to pull it up, okay? That's very, you know, that's very common, okay? Because that's a tendency of the muscle because of its insertion, how it works, you know, when you move your arms. That's also, you know, the reason why I was telling you not to move your arm much and not to raise it a lot. So you're gonna use a band for at least like, the first two months or so, okay? Okay, and then very important. I'm also, sure. I'm like a little old lady. I'm also very scared of the anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Everybody is. Yeah. <laughs> you're not, you're not alone. Actually, anesthesia, there is a risk. There is a risk of death, but it's very, very small here. Uh, and, and in the United States, it's very small. Actually, in the whole world, uh, people still have that notion that um, uh, it's risky because maybe 40 years ago or, or more, uh, we didn't have some... Um, um, monitoring that we have now as far as your oxygenation, your gases in your blood, uh, how you're breathing, how you're reacting to the, to the drugs that we're giving you. Today we have a very, very good monitoring of that um, and that gives us an um, instant uh, picture of everything that's going on. So we can see things that are going wrong very quickly and we can modify things. Uh, maybe 40 years ago we would wait until things were really bad because we didn't really have a, a, you know, an instant picture of what's going on. So with the monitoring, there is a risk. Yes, of course, there's a risk for everything, okay? But the risk is really minimal, okay? I compare it so that people understand, like dying in, a, you know, in an airplane crash. It's actually extremely rare. It's much more common that you will die or have a, you know, a serious injury from a car accident, especially close to your home because you're usually not you know, as attentive as you were before. Okay. Can I be like waking up right after? I you will be. You <laughs> okay. will be. Actually, you will be, okay? <laughs> the drugs are very short acting. That's something else that gives us a lot of safety. Okay. They're very, very short acting. Oh, so, as soon as they stop giving you drugs, you'll be, you know, you'll probably be fine and be, you know, waking up, okay? You're going to okay. be still drowsy and stuff, but you're going to be waking up. Okay, okay, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> you got a big list, that's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, like, instructions for like staying like alone at home. Like I would be staying pretty much with my grandma. With your grandma, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Again, you can't do any, any forceful stuff with your arms, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but you will, you will have some, she will be with you, right? Yeah, she's gonna be with okay. me. Okay, okay, okay. She won't be able to like lift me or anything like that. You don't need that. The, the only thing you don't need, you gotta be careful with your arms, okay? I mean, you can still use your muscles, all your other muscles, okay? Uh, you will be able to shower the next day, okay? Only shower, no bathtub, pool, ocean, you know, nothing that is still water, just running water, okay? And the next day after you come here and you change your dressing, okay? The change of the surgical bra, when can I change into like a, another? You should probably use it for the first uh, month or a couple of months, that, that type of bra, okay? Just to give you, it's, it's really to give you support, okay? You've got an extra weight there. Okay, just to give you really support, all right? Then you can change it. I wouldn't use the bra with the wires and stuff, you know, for the first two to three months, okay? So it doesn't hurt your, your incision. It doesn't press there. When it comes to uh, rest time, because I work with the cells department. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many days should I be? When should I return to the office? Well, it's it's mostly an office thing, right? Mm -hmm. But I would, I would probably get, if you can have like five days to a week, that would be good. Uh, if you can't have that, maybe less. But I would say that at least that, that way you have, you know, you're, you're not in pain or anything, you're able to work and you're fine, okay? There's no real blood loss, there's very insignificant the blood loss, so it usually is, is fine. But just so you don't, you know, you're not, you don't have to be there and, and be in pain and anything like that, okay? Okay, I bought, uh, I bought Tylenol and t uh, Ultra, I believe it's like Ultra, ultra. Strength, mm -hmm. and then uh, Tylenol PM. Okay. Is that okay? Is that okay? We usually give you some medications, some harder medications, some like Narco and Percocet, mm -hmm. because 
since we cut the muscle to put it under, that gives you a little bit more pain in the first few days. Yes, we cut not all of it. The muscle actually, your, your, your chest muscle is actually inserted all over here. We only cut a little part here so that we can insert the, the, the implant inside, okay, under it. Uh, so most of it is still attached. That's why if you move a lot, a lot you know, it will displace. So, but cutting that gives you a little bit of pain too, okay, in the post-op. So we do give stronger medication and you can use it as needed, okay? okay. Some people don't use it and some people do. Uh, but you, you, you should have it at least, you know, so if you have pain, you're not uncomfortable and you can, you know. Okay. Uh, and I get the prescription tomorrow? Yes, you get as you, okay. before you get out of here. Or if you want somebody to fill it up for you, just before you start surgery, somebody can go fill it up for you so you already have it My once you're will done. Be, will be coming Wonderful. Uh, food, food-wise? You can eat everything. I, I, you, should, you should probably start with something light, like a soup or something like that, because just so you know, you're sure you don't have nausea or anything. We do give you medication for nausea too, okay? okay. Uh, Zofran, okay, which is very strong medication for that. So if you have it, take it, okay? But um, a lot of people don't have a problem with that, especially because it's such a short surgery. So there's less drugs, you know, in your system being cleared. Okay, and then last, um, mm -hmm. traveling traveling um well that depends first the, the driving long term you know i would give it a month at least for like long term driving okay like like a trip or something like that and of course carrying bags and stuff so you shouldn't be doing that or going exposing yourself to the sun the scar is well hidden it will be on inside your bikini line but you should not expose it to the sun for the first year okay until it's clear because you, you you're going to see that it's a little bit reddish while it is reddish it's more you know it's more um uh, it can get thicker it can get darker so you should be careful with that okay, okay. i think that's the end of my interview <laughs> really good 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 no that's good you brought all your you know all your you were very else? organized that's good is there <laughs> anything good. else i should know no, basically, tomorrow we'll go through it all again, okay? I'm just going to explain the wrist again, okay? It's very important that you understand and understand the whole process and, you know, capsular contracture, seromes, everything. Mm -hmm. But I'll go through everything, okay, so that you can understand and, you know, be full, fully uh, consenting the, okay, the, the, the procedure, okay? That is more than, like, my actual schoolwork <laughs> and anything else you have no idea really. All right, that's good. But that's good, that's good. <laughs> that gives you a little more safety, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, more security, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. All right. Nice meeting you, Camilla. Okay? Nice meeting you. I'll see All you right. Tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>